All right. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Boomerang Academy. Thank you for joining us today. We're so glad that you could be here. Um, if you would, drop into the chat. Tell us where you're joining us from and what the weather is like where you are today. Uh, today, I have with me Diana Otero. We're both based in Indianapolis, where it is 80 degrees and sunny. And we also have our wonderful presenter, Jesse Gilchrist. Jesse, what's the weather like where you are today? It is about gray and 50, bordering on rain. So a little different than 80 degrees. I would take the 80. Just a little different. <laughs> All right, so let's go ahead and take care of some housekeeping before we turn it over to Jesse. So uh, today, should you need our um, dial-in number, the number is one 669 And I'm going to go ahead and drop that into the chat. Um, feel free to use that if you need audio at any point in time. Also, we wanted to let you know that um, if you want to uh, have a live transcript, you can click on the CC at the bottom of your screen and it will be available to you. A couple other things. If you want to share ideas, please drop into the chat. Like right now, if you want to drop in, tell us where you're joining us from and what the weather's like. Do that during the session. If you have thoughts, ideas, best practices that you want to share, maybe tell us a little bit about how you're utilizing um, the Zapier apps that we're going to be talking about today, drop those into the chat. We're always happy to see those ideas and thoughts. But if you have a burning question, something you really want to have Jesse answer today, please drop that into the Q&A. That way it kind of stands out from the chat itself. Also, we will be sharing with you any resources mentioned later today. We will share the slides and the recording of this session later today via email. Any questions we're not able to answer live, we will definitely get back with you via email in a follow-up after the session. And if at any point in time you need further assistance, please reach out to our amazing support team at support at bloomerang.com. They are always happy to help. So without any further ado, I am going to turn it over to Jesse Gilchrist with Sidekick Solutions. She's going to be talking about Bloomerang and Zapier and automating your e-commerce store with Bloomerang. Jesse, thank you so much for being here today. Absolutely. Thanks so much for having us. Really excited about this one today. We get asked a lot about e-commerce stores and connecting them with Bloomerang. So I think this will be a great one. So uh, as Margie introduced me, I am Jesse Gilchrist. I am the Zapier product manager and a senior consultant here at Sidekick Solutions. And you may be wondering, why are we here presenting to you on Zapier integrations? And we have been Bloomerang users since about 2013. And most recently, we're also a part of the Bloomerang team that launched the Bloomerang Zapier app. So really intimate knowledge of the Bloomerang Zapier app here and excited to show you what we can do with that app and connecting it to an e-commerce store. Now we're gonna be doing live demos with Zapier throughout the webinar today. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn my video off so that you can focus on the screen share and be able to see everything that we are demonstrating throughout our time here today. So the goal of today's webinar is to show you how a Bloomerang integration with an e-commerce store using Zapier can support your fundraising efforts by reducing the time spent performing data entry and really ensuring consistency across how you are coding transactions in Bloomerang. So we're going to start by introducing Bloomerang and Zapier, covering how they work together and why Zapier integrations are a key feature of your Bloomerang system and fundraising strategy. We're going to explore and demonstrate how you can use the Bloomerang Zapier app to sync transactions or orders from your e-commerce store to Bloomerang how you can dynamically code the fund campaign or appeal in Bloomerang for the line items in your order, and even how you can account for shipping charges in Bloomerang. And then we'll wrap up by talking about how you can get started with Bloomerang and Zapier. Now, it's really common for organizations of all sizes to use many types of software, and we believe that automated integrations are essential to your constituent database. Integrations can help connect these systems, creating a tech stack that supports your organization and its strategic goals. And this is where Zapier comes in. As some of you may not be familiar with Zapier, we want to start with a high-level overview of what Zapier is and why we believe it's a key feature of your Bloomerang system and fundraising strategy. So Zapier is an automation software that enables additional Bloomerang integration and fundraising opportunities. It's really a middleware that sits in between Bloomerang and other apps you use, helping them talk to each other. 
The Bloomerang Zapier app extends the power of your database by enabling integration with over 5,000 other applications in Zapier's directory. And the best part is that Zapier was designed for anyone to build an integration. You don't need to be a developer or no code to build your own automation in Zapier. The flexibility of the Zapier platform enables custom integrations, meaning that you aren't limited to a one-size-fits-all workflow, mapping, or formatting. And you can build integrations that are perfect for your organization and your workflows. Integrations are a key feature of your Bloomerang database and can really take your fundraising efforts to the next level. With this model, data should flow in and out of your Bloomerang database, connecting to other best-in-class tools your organization uses. And by keeping Bloomerang as a central hub of your tech stack, you'll create a global record of constituent engagement with your organization and centralize your reporting efforts. Now, before we dive into the actual demos with an e-commerce store, we want to do a quick poll to see how many of you are using Zapier and using it with Bloomerang. So let us know if you're using Zapier. Maybe this is the first time you've heard of it, or maybe you're currently using Zapier, but go ahead and let us know in the poll so we can get a sense where everyone is at in the room. Perfect. It looks like about half of you haven't heard, or maybe a little bit over half haven't heard of Zapier before. Some of you have heard of it, but never used it, and only a, a couple of you have already used Zapier. Okay. I see one occasionally tried in the chat. We hear that often as well. Now we are actually gonna dive right into our demos here today. So we want to start by demonstrating how to set up a basic sync of paid orders from an e-commerce store to Bloomerang. Now for the demonstrations in this webinar, we're gonna be using Shopify as the e-commerce store but the flows that we're gonna outline can be deployed in a similar manner for other integration-friendly e-commerce platforms. Another common one is WooCommerce. So while today we are demonstrating Shopify, just know a lot of the same tenants and mapping and flows that we're gonna be setting up today could be duplicated and implemented for another store like WooCommerce as well. Now, when we sync paid orders in Shopify to Bloomerang, there are two primary steps. First, we need to find or create our constituent in Bloomerang, and then we want to create a donation on the timeline for the founder created constituent. So the donation is serving as that transaction record for our paid order. Now, optionally, we can also add a step to update the address phone or email on the constituent in Bloomerang if an existing one was found with the customer information in Shopify. So let's go ahead and actually walk through how to set this up in Zapier. So I'm gonna go ahead and hop over to my Zapier account here and I'm gonna click the create button to create a new Zap. Now our workflow starts with a new paid order in Shopify. So that is going to be our trigger. That's gonna be what starts our automation. And you can ignore this um, AI beta feature up here at the top. My Zapier account is opted into some beta features in Zapier. So you can ignore that. But I'm gonna go ahead and search for and select Shopify. And for my triggering event, I'm gonna choose new paid order. So we only want to sync paid orders to Shopify because if an order ends up failing or is not fulfilled, we do not want to go ahead and create that transaction record in Bloomerang. We only want to do that when it is a paid order. So I'm gonna select new paid order as my event. I've already connected my Shopify store. And then our next step is to test our trigger, which will generate sample data. So this will return up to three recently paid orders that will allow us to set up the mapping for our integration. So these are samples only, and they will not actually run through the integration because they were paid before the integration was turned on. And Zaps, or workflows in Zapier, only trigger and run in real time. So I'm going to go ahead and test my trigger to pull in a sample record here. I've actually got one that I want to pull in. Let me find the right one. This is the one I want. Perfect. Now, once we have our sample data, we first thing that we want to do, and you can see that in our workflow right here, 
is that we only want to continue if the total price of the order is greater than zero, because we don't want to create a zero dollar donation record in Bloomerang if it was a free order. So if someone purchased a free ebook through our store, we don't want to create a record of that zero dollar transaction in Bloomerang. So the first thing I'm going to do for my action is I'm going to choose the filter built in tool in Zapier. And I'm going to tell my Zap to only continue if the total price is greater than zero. So I'm telling my old automation that I only want it to continue essentially if there was this was actually a paid order where more than one penny was exchanged between the customer and with my organization. So I'm going to click continue to go ahead and test my filter. And you can see that in this case, it's telling me that my zap would have continued because my total price on the sample order I've selected was $7.90. Now, after we've set up our filter, we will add our next action, which is to find or create a constituent in Bloomerang for the customer. So I'm just clicked the plus sign to add a new action. And then I'm going to search for and select Bloomerang as my app. And I'm going to choose find constituent as my action, so as my search. I'm going to choose my Bloomerang account because I've got two connected here. Now, the first thing I need to do is identify what type of constituent I'm looking for. So in this case, we have individuals that are making the purchases through our e-commerce store. So I'm going to go ahead and Zapier works a little bit like a mail merge where we can map in the details uh, by selecting the fields or data elements that we want to map. So I'm going to map my customer's first name, my customer last name. I'm going to map in my address. In this case, I want to use my billing address because I could be shipping this to a friend. So I want to use my billing address as the address for the customer. I'm going to pull in my customer's phone number and my customer's email address. Now, if you do happen to receive orders for organizations in an e-commerce store, there is advanced functionality that can be used to support the searching of a constituent that is an organization or an individual. We're not going to cover it in this demo today, but there are ways to support that um, if you if you do accept orders uh, made by organizations as well. Now, when we're doing this search, we're gonna leave these two fields down here, which is to include the constituents giving history and household information. We're just gonna leave these blank because we don't need this information in our automation. And then what we're gonna do at the bottom is we're gonna check this box that says, create a Bloomerang constituent if it doesn't exist yet. What this is telling our automation is that when this search is performed, if it doesn't match to an existing constituent in Bloomerang, we want the automation to go ahead and create a new one. Now, this search is fairly smart. Most of the time, it's going to match to existing constituents if one does exist because it's searching on name and different combinations of contact information. So I'm going to go ahead and map my fields again for if I were creating a new constituent. So I'm gonna say that here's my customer first name. Oops. Customer last name. I can leave my informal, formal envelope and rec recognition names empty because Bloomerang will automatically generate those for me using the first and last name. I'm going to come down and map in my address. So I'm gonna choose my address type of home. If you're mapping in an address, phone, or email, the type fields are required. So I'm going to go ahead and search for my billing address, and I want address line one and address line two, if that happens to come through. I'm going to map my city. And again, as a reminder, I'm using my billing address here, not the shipping address, because I want to ensure that I am mapping the details. Oops for the purchaser, not for whomever they are actually shipping the product to or shipping that order to. So 
you can see I'm just mapping all of my data elements in here. Map in my country. And then we're going to do the same for email and phone. And I typically default my phone number when I'm setting up an automation to mobile, as most people when providing a phone number are providing a mobile phone these days. So I've gone ahead and mapped all of my data. If I wanted to, I could map to any of the custom fields I have set up in Bloomerang as well, where I could code a field if I have certain attributes that I like to be coded for individuals who make orders through my e-commerce store, I could do that as well. For this demo, I'm not going to, but you can see that it's pulling in a number of custom fields we have set up in our Bloomerang database. So now we're going to, similar as we did in our trigger, once I click continue, it's going to give me the option to test this action. Now, I'm actually going to test this action because it's going to, going to return an ID that we need in order to append our order transaction back to that specific founder created constituent. So it's going to return a payload of data that we can use in those subsequent actions in our Zap. So I see a good question here I'm actually going to tackle before we move forward. A question is why not track zero value orders because we don't want to track this as an interaction with an existing constituent or potentially could be a new constituent. So that's a great question. So then for this demo today, we are not Sinking zero dollar orders, but yes, your organization could for a zero dollar order create an interaction in the timeline of the constituent or choose to just do a find create and ensure that that constituent is reflected in your Bloomerang database. So there are ways to account for zero dollar orders in Bloomerang for the flows we're setting up here today that are focused on the sync of that payment from the e-commerce store to Bloomerang we are filtering out those $0 orders so that you're not getting a $0 transaction record. So coming back to my finder create constituent, you can see that again, it's giving me all of this information about the constituent that it matched to. In this case, I know it matched because I have this constituent in my database already, but it's giving me all this data back for my constituent. So what we're going to do next is we're going to go ahead and create that donation record in Bloomerang to track the paid order. So I'm going to choose Bloomerang as my app again, and this time I'm going to choose create donation. Continue. Now, as I mentioned on the find create constituent search, the reason why we need to test that action is because there is an ID that is return, and we need to map that to our constituent field right here, because that ID is what is telling our automation that we want to append this donation to the timeline of the specific constituent that we found or created in our prior step. So I'm going to click into the constituent field, and it's going to come up with a list of all of the constituents in my database. But in this case, I'm going to click custom and click on my find constituent Bloomerang action. And I'm going to select the ID field right here. And it's gonna go ahead and pull that into my mapping. For my date, I'm gonna pull in the process at date that's coming from my Shopify store. I'm gonna set my method as credit card. I'm gonna map my total price as the amount for my donation I'm creating in Bloomerang. And then in this case, because I'm creating a single donation record for the full order, I'm not doing any dynamic coding of fund campaign or appeal. So I'm just going to go ahead and select the fund campaign and appeal values that I would like to assign for that donation record that I'm creating in Bloomerang. And so I've, I have values already set up here in my, my Bloomerang database but I can ensure I'm coding my fun campaign and appeal as I want those orders to be reflected in my database. Now, in this case, I'm going to say that the confirmation email that the purchaser that my customer gets from Shopify is going to serve as their acknowledgement. So I wanna mark this as do not acknowledge in Bloomerang. And then we can code any additional custom fields that we have set up. For example, in our database that we have here, we have a transaction source custom field 
where I'm going to be able to code and say that this is syncing in from Shopify. And then I'm going to go ahead and map my order number from Shopify as well, so that I have that reference in my Bloomerang database for which order in Shopify this transaction relates to. Now, similar to our last step, we can go ahead and test this action. If we test this, it will actually create the donation record in Bloomerang. You'll see I'll test this and it is helpful because it'll give you that confirmation back that your donation was created successfully. You then can obviously go into Bloomerang and if you do not want a record of that donation, you can always delete it. Now, if we didn't want to update existing constituents at this time, we could go ahead and click publish and turn our automation on. But let's say we want the address, phone, or email coming through that customer to update our existing constituents in Bloomerang. We are going to add another filter here, just as we did at the start of our app. And in this case, what we're going to do is this find constituent Bloomerang step right here. If we scroll down to the, oops, I went too far. Hidden in here. I'm going to go ahead and search for it. If we search here, there is a field that gets returned that's called that data was found. That means that our automation matched to an existing constituent. And so if we take that field, and this is a true false field and say it's true, our automation then is only going to continue if this find create constituent matched to an existing constituent in Bloomerang. So ours did match. And when I click continue, you're gonna see that it confirms our zap would have continued. And what we can do then is use the update constituent action in the Bloomerang Zapier app. Now this action operates a little bit like our create donation where the first thing we need to do is map in the constituent that we want to update. So I'm gonna go ahead, same thing as I did before. I'm gonna to go to custom and I'm gonna choose the ID returned by that finder create constituent action. Now on this action, I don't wanna change any of the name information for my customer uh, one, or update my constituent Bloomerang with any of the name changes for my customer, but I do wanna update the address, phone and email. So I'm gonna come in here and same as we did in our create constituent, I'm gonna go ahead and map in my phone, my email, and then my address. Now, one thing that I think is really helpful to know is that the update constituent action in the Bloomerang Zapier app, when we are updating address, phone, and email specifically, it will not delete any of your existing address, phones, or emails in Bloomerang. What it'll do is it'll actually search against those. And if the information that is coming through your automation is new, that new information gets promoted as the primary. So it becomes the primary address, the primary phone, the primary email. And any existing primary information gets demoted to secondary information. So you're not going to lose any existing address, phones, or emails. They will just become secondary contact information and the new information coming through your automation will be promoted as the primary information. Now, other fields on the constituent record, if you're going to map to custom fields or anything of that nature, those do override existing data. But for address, phone, and email, it's important to remember that this is not going to remove any existing contact information. The new information gets promoted as the primary. So with that contact information mapped, I then again could go down and test my action and then publish my automation. So I see two questions here I'm gonna tackle real quick before we move on to the next use case that we've got here in our demonstration. So the first question is, since this requires more than one action, do you pretty much have to have the upgraded version of Zapier for this to actually integrate with Bloomerang? So yes, you do need the starter plan in Zapier. So that's the lowest paid plan that Zapier offers that is required to build multi-step Zaps. So there's no way to integrate an e-commerce store with Bloomerang on a free plan in Zapier. So at a minimum, you will need the starter plan in Zapier. 
Um, so the cheapest one there is $20 a month, but there is also a 15% discount for nonprofits that can be applied on top of that. And it looks like Megan went ahead and put that in the chat there as well. And we will be sharing that nonprofit uh, discount link here at the end of the webinar as well. So that'll be coming. And then the next question here from Vin was, how accurate does the constituent name need to be? Meaning does everything need to be 100% match or can it be a close match? So the name is looking for a fairly close match. Um, so for example, James and Jim are likely, oh, perfect, thanks Margie, went ahead and shared that now. Um, so Vin, the name does need to be um, pretty close. Oh, and looks like Diana actually already got it there as well. Um, so the name variations, as Diana put in the chat, um, Differences in name may match based off of a preferred or common variations in nicknames, um, but things that are drastically different won't. So one of the main ones we see where sometimes we won't get a match are when the customer is making an order through an e-commerce store and in the first name field, they enter their name and their spouse or partner's name. So instead of submitting an order as Jesse Gilchrist, I submit my order with Jesse and an ampersand and Jeremy in the first name field. Um, so that often is where we see that kind of failure on name match um, along with the contact information. But it is a fairly smart search. If a duplicate is created, that'll pop up in your duplicate queue and Bloomerang, which does do more of a fuzzy match on some of those items. So if for some chance your automation does create a, or a duplicate in Bloomerang, your duplicate report in Bloomerang will generally catch that and then you can merge those at that time. Now, the workflow that we just showcased really is what we consider a very basic standard sync when you only want to create a single donation record in Bloomerang for the full order. However, many organizations with e-commerce stores have different coding that they want to assign in Bloomerang based on the product or item that was purchased. And so the basic sync that we just demonstrated can be enhanced to create a split payment in Bloomerang with each product in the order creating a separate split on that payment. In order to accomplish this, a lookup table is used in the solution to dynamically code the fund campaign order appeal in Bloomerang based on the product purchased in that order, ensuring that each of those splits has the appropriate coding. So a lookup table in Zapier, if you're not familiar with these, is a way to convert data from your source application to, the, to a corresponding value in your target application. And the lookup key in that table is what we want to search for or look up. So in the case of an e-commerce store, this would be our product or our item. In some applications, this may be a human readable value or label. So our item is our ebook. Um, and in others, it may be the ID or a value for the record. When possible, we recommend using IDs as opposed to a human readable label as these generally remain static. Um, even if the, the front end label of that item or record is modified. So great example is that for an e-commerce store, there's generally an item ID or often a SKU that's assigned to each item or product. And we generally recommend using that in our lookup table so that in case we modify the name of that item or product in any way, the SKU will remain consistent and we can ensure that that lookup is still going to be successful. Now, when this lookup occurs, and that step is successful, it returns the related value that we can use for mapping into our target system, in this case being Bloomerang. And when we talk about lookup tables in Zapier, there are actually a number of apps that can be used to provide that lookup or conversion functionality. But when it comes to automating the sync of paid orders in Shopify or any other e-commerce platform to Bloomerang, you actually will want to use Formatter by Zapier. Now, Formatter by Zapier is a completely free app in Zapier's marketplace and can be used to create the lookup table. Um, and the reason why this is the lookup table that we recommend for syncing of an e-commerce store is because it provides what's called line item support, meaning if we have multiple items in our order, it's going to go ahead and cycle through each of those items in our order to return the appropriate values for each item. Not all lookup tables will support that. And the other piece that allows us to do is it allows us to assign a fallback value if the item we're trying to look up is not found in the table. So if you're adding new products into your store and you forget to add it to the lookup table, a default value can be returned to ensure your automation continues running successfully. 
Now, when we add this dynamic coding into our Zap, there are three changes that we need to make to our basic thing. First is that instead of our initial filter saying that the total price is greater than zero, in this case, we want our filter to say that our total line item price is greater than zero. So that in case there was free products that just had shipping associated, our Zap, we don't want it to continue in that case. We'll cover shipping here after this flow. Um, but first thing we want to do is update our filter. Next thing we're going to do is we are going to add a lookup table to return our fund, campaign, or appeal based on the product's view. In this case, I'm going to be dynamically coding appeal only, but you could implement the same lookup functionality if you wanted to code fund, campaign, appeal, maybe a custom field, anything differently based off of the item or product that was purchased. And then the last thing we need to do is to calculate the subtotal per line item in the order. So for each item, we need to calculate the price of the item paid multiplied by the quantity of items purchased. So let's hop back over to the base flow that we had set up here and let's start making these changes. So the first change we talked about that we need to make is that we need to update our initial filter. So instead of total price, we're going to change this to total line items price. So you can see my total price before was $7.90. But in this case, my total line item price is only $3. So I had $4.90 of shipping. So I'm just going to make that slight change to my initial filter here. You can see we would have continued because our total line item price is greater than zero. Now, the next step we're going to do is this one right here. So we're going to add this lookup step and then our calculation before our create donation step. So I'm going to come back in between my find constituent and my create donation. I'm going to click the plus sign and I'm going to choose formatter by Zapier. I'm going to choose utilities as my action type. And then for my transform, this is where we're going to select lookup table. Now the lookup key, this is going to be my SKU. So, whoops. So I'm going to search for and select my line item SKU right here. And you can see that I have two items in my order. Order They get separated by a comma. So we've got our SKUs for our items. And then I'm going to go ahead and what I will do is I will actually Enter the SKUs for each of my items in my store over here on the left. Oops. And then it's important to note that if you have variations on your item, um, this would actually be the SKU for the variation. So in this case, items one, two, three, four through one, two, three, seven, these are actually different t-shirt sizes that I have for a t-shirt product in my store. So you'll want to actually add the SKU for each of those variants because that's the SKU that'll be returned here in our trigger. So what I'm gonna do then is once I have all of my SKUs in here for my products, I'm gonna go ahead and just write in what appeal I would want to have assigned in Bloomerang. So all of my t-shirts are going to get an appeal of apparel. This right here, the 4567, this is an ebook. So I'm going to assign my appeal that I have in Bloomerang for ebooks. And then my fallback value, I'm just going to call Shopify. Now it's important to note that these values I'm entering for Bloomerang actually need to exist in Bloomerang already. So in my Bloomerang database, I already have appeals set up for apparel, I have one set up for ebooks, and I have one set up for Shopify as well. Now the fallback value I generally recommend being a value that you can use for a data quality report in Bloomerang. So if by chance an order sinks through before you've had a chance to add a product to your lookup table, you then can see that in Bloomerang with a report and modify that appeal as you need to to reflect the actual item that was purchased in that order. Now, same with all of our other actions, I'm going to click test action and you're going to see that for four, five, six, seven, it's going to return ebooks. And for product one, two, three, four, it's going to return apparel. And I'll be able to map those items into my create donation to ensure that my 
appeal code gets coded appropriately based off of the items that were purchased. Now, the next step we need to add is calculating the line item subtotal. So we're gonna go ahead and click the plus sign again, and we are actually gonna choose Formatter by Zapier a second time. Formatter by Zapier has a lot of utilities in here that can be really helpful in your automations. So in this case, we're gonna select numbers. And then we are gonna choose a spreadsheet style formula right here. So in this case, what we're gonna do is we are actually going to map in our line items price and our quantity to ensure, and you can see this box here, this gray box that says values, but it's around this formula. This indicates that the formatter step provides line item support, which means that when I type in my line items price and I say that I'm gonna multiply it by my quantity, you may look at this and say, but I see there's two currency amounts here and then there's two quantities. That's for each of the items that was in my order. And so this line items box means that the $1 is gonna be multiplied by the quantity of one for my first item. And then the $1 is gonna be multiplied by two for the second item that was in my order. And you'll see that when we test this action, it's gonna return $1, a $1 subtotal for the first item and a $2 subtotal for the second item. So now that we've made those updates, we can go to our create donation action and make those updates. So instead of the total price, this is where we are gonna map our output from our subtotals that we did. Now it's important to note if you also offer things like discounts on your products, that also could have been included in that formatter calculation. In this case, my store does not have discounts, but if you had discounts, you could expand that calculation to also account for those discounts as well. And then for my appeal, I don't want everything to be coded as Shopify. I wanna use what is returned from my dynamic lookup. So I'm gonna choose custom and choose my lookup table and choose that output. So eBooks and apparel. And again, all of our other details are custom fields, our fund and campaign. Those can all be the same value across all of our splits. And so I don't need to make any changes to those. Now, if we had tested this and created a donation in Bloomerang, I actually wanna show you what this will look like because I think it's helpful to see the illustration of what this actually look, looks like when we say it provides line item support. So this right here, this $3 split payment with a $1 split for eBooks and a $2 split for apparel. This is that order I was just demonstrating in our, in our automation setup. So you can see that the total amount of those line items was $3, but each of my items in my order, so I have my eBooks, and you can see I also mapped to a description and a quantity field. So I'm able to show the description and the quantity there as well. I can show you what that looks like here real quick. Pull that up here. Oops. So this would be our line items name. You can see I can pull in the names of the items. I can also again map in my quantity. And that's what results in each of those splits also being coded with the description and the quantity for the item that was purchased and the quantity of that item. So I have that additional detail for my reporting in Bloomerang. And then the other split, which was for my t-shirt. So I've got my appeal that's for apparel. And then you'll see that I ordered two extra large t-shirts. Now there was one other flow that I'd like to demonstrate quickly. So when we made that change to provide the, the dynamic coding based off of what items were purchased, that flow now does not account for shipping. And some organizations really like to reflect the amount paid for shipping in their Bloomerang database. So if that's the case, we can really easily set up a second zap that allows us to 
sync shipping from our e-commerce store to Bloomerang. You can do this under the starter plan in Zapier. So again, that lowest paid plan. If you have a higher subscription tier in Zapier, like the professional level tier, you actually could incorporate the shipping and the line items into a single flow using the paths functionality, but that is only available at higher plans in Zapier. So we're going to illustrate setting this up as a separate Zap, just capturing shipping, because it's really helpful to see that you don't need to pay for the higher plan to include it all in one. You can just have two automations to account for that shipping. So the shipping flow is really similar to our basic sync. The difference is that our initial filter is going to be based off of the shipping total being greater than zero. If it is, we are actually going to delay the flow by two minutes. And this is done to ensure that this flow offsets from our line items flow. And the reason why we want that is because if this is a new customer, a new constituent in our Bloomerang database, we don't want these two flows to run at the same time and result in two constituents being created. So we're adding the two minute delay to offset this from the line item flow and ensure that then when this find create constituent action runs, it finds the constituent created in the line item flow. So again, ensuring that we're not creating duplicates in Bloomerang when we don't need to, and that delay can be really helpful to offset related zaps that will both be triggering based off of the same event. And then what we'll do is we'll create a donation for just the shipping. So we're going to hop into Zapier and set up our Zap. And what I'm actually going to do um, to make sure we have enough time for questions here is I'm actually going to copy the one we've already been working on here and just delete out the steps we don't, we don't need. So I'm going to go ahead and just duplicate my Zap. I'm going to go ahead and open my copy. Now in this flow, because we will be updating the constituent if it matches an existing one in our line item flow, we can actually delete the update constituent actions. We don't need those twice. And the corresponding filter, we can delete out our formatter steps. And there we go, we're, we've got a much leaner zap. So the first thing we're gonna do again is in our filter, we're using the same new paid order trigger, but in our filter now, instead of total price or total line items price, we want, oops, got the wrong order pulled in here. Let me pull in an order. In this case, we want the shipping lines total. I wanna get my order back here. You see right here, I want shipping. Oops, that's the wrong one. Okay, shipping lines price right here. So we want the shipping lines price greater than zero. So again, we only want to continue this flow if there is shipping on the order. There's no shipping associated. The zap is going to stop and ensure that we're not creating, again, zero dollar transaction records in Bloomerang. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to add our delay. So delay by Zapier is another built-in tool that we can use. And all we're going to do is we're just going to tell our Zap that only after it passes that filter. So only after we know that the order actually does have shipping associated, are we going to delay it for two minutes? So we don't want to run this before the filter because we don't want the Zap to delay and use a task for every order. We only want to do this for the ones that actually have shipping. And now this delay step, we can actually skip this. We don't need to test it delaying for two minutes here. So we can just skip that test. And then we can do our find create constituent. Again, everything is going to be exactly the same on this. So all of our same mapping as we did previously. And then when we create our donation, Let me test my find create here since I copied this out. So 
So for my amount, this is where I'm going to pull in my shipping lines price. And then for my appeal, I went ahead and I have a appeal set up for call it shipping. Oh, whoop, that's the wrong field. That'd be why. Okay. Appeal for shipping. So again, coding differently from my apparel or my eBooks, I can see that that's for shipping. Now these all have the consistent same fund and campaign, so I can easily report on all of my Shopify, Shopify transactions. And then in my description, I'm actually just gonna write in that this would be for shipping. So I can write in that that's the description I'd want to associate with that. But again, we can have our same transaction source and order number mapped as we did for our line items flow. Now in this slide deck that you'll get following today's webinar, there are screenshots of all of the, the key steps you've been setting up here today as well. So if you do try to set this up yourself, not only will you have the recording, but you'll also have some screenshots of what those different steps look like. Now I wanna quickly point out some additional enhancements that can be made to, made to the flows we covered today. So obviously as we talked about earlier, the flows can be enhanced to support both individual and organizational customers. It can be configured to support international customers. So ensuring that the address is formatted appropriately for constituents that live outside the US, Canada, or Bermuda. It can again, convert Shopify data to any custom fields you have in Bloomerang and also account for discounts and tax as well. Now getting started with Bloomerang automations is actually really easy. The first step is signing up for Zapier. If you don't already have an account, all Zapier accounts begin with a 14 day free trial of what's called the professional tier functionality. Following that 14 day period, your plan is converted to the free plan until you choose to upgrade. Most automations you're going to need to run with Bloomerang will require the starter plan at a minimum because that's what's required in order to build multi-step automations. Now, as Margie shared in the chat earlier, there is a 15% discount available for nonprofits. And so go ahead and Pull that link out of the chat if you have not signed up for Zapier already, or if you have already signed up for Zapier, you can still apply for that nonprofit discount as well. After you sign up for Zapier, Zapier connecting your Bloomerang database is actually really easy. You will click My Apps on the left menu of your Zapier account. You'll click Add Connection search for and select Bloomerang, and then you'll grant access to your Bloomerang database using your login credentials. Now, one tip that I have come across and share with my clients across the board is that the user login that you're using to grant access to your Zapier or in Zapier to your Bloomerang database, we recommend setting up a user in Bloomerang that is generic for your organization. So naming that user Zapier and using an email like info at or support at or Zapier app, some type of email alias for your organization, because it will future-proof your automation in the event of staff turnover. If Bloomerang is connected to Zapier using a specific team member's Bloomerang account, if that user is then deactivated in Bloomerang, it will drop that connection between Bloomerang and Zapier. So cannot recommend enough creating a user in Bloomerang with an organizational email alias so that you can connect it to Zapier and ensure that your solution is feature-proofed in the face of staff turnover. Now we've obviously given you a great place to start today with trying to set up an integration between an e-commerce store and Bloomerang yourself. But if your team would like support setting up an automation from Shopify or WooCommerce to Bloomerang, we do offer an integration bundle for Bloomerang customers. So this includes end-to-end -end configuration and deployment of your automation for one e-commerce store. Um, now this service is optional. You can absolutely implement Bloomerang automations yourself on a DIY basis, um, but it is important to note that if you did wanna work with our team uh, and take advantage of this bundle, the Zapier subscription is separate from this pricing. Now, if you prefer to build your automations DIY or just want to learn more about Zapier, there are plenty of resources available. So you can search available apps in Zapier's marketplace. You can look at Bloomerang Zap templates. There's a lot of training and help resources in Bloomerang. And then you can obviously dive right in and just begin building.
Now it's been a pleasure to present today. I love talking automations. I love talking Bloomerang automations. So we're going to go ahead and launch a poll. If you want to work with a consultant to set up an integration, or if you have other tools you use and want to talk about integrations between Bloomerang and those tools, please let us know. We're happy to reach out and provide any more information that may be helpful. For any of you building Zapier integrations already, way to go. You've already taken that first step. Um, but I'll go ahead and open up the floor. If there are any more questions, please feel free to enter those in the chat or in the Q&A, and I can stay on for a few more minutes and answer those. Jesse, thank you so much for being here today. We really greatly appreciate it. Um, and I do see that Ben has a, another point here, a question. I'm not sure. He says, good point. Can I match the name if it's, say, from a UK address, which only uses one field of the Bloomerang system, as all non-US Canadian addresses in Bloomerang cannot be input into split individual address fields? Yep. So, Ben, if you have in, international customers, so outside US, Canada, or Bermuda, when you are using the create constituent or the um, update constituent actions in the Bloomerang Zapier app, you will need to map the data as you would if you were syncing into or manually entering that into the Bloomerang system. Meaning, let me go back to one of my actions here. Um, meaning on that find create constituent action for international constituents, all of the address details outside of, I believe it is um, postal code and country, all get put into the street field. So if this were an international constituent, you would need to have the city and the state or province in the street with those fields being null um, as the city and state fields do not exist for international addresses in Bloomerang. Awesome, thank you. Great. Well, um, Jesse, I really appreciate you being here today. It's um, so helpful. I did leave the poll up. If you would like any outreach or any um, consultation from Jesse's group, please feel free to drop into the poll for us. Let us know that. Um, and otherwise, um, I don't see any other questions coming in, but I think you answered a lot of them as you went through our session today. So thank you once again, Jesse. Absolutely. And as always, our door, uh, Margie, you obviously know this, you and Diana <laughs> both do, but for those of you on the call, our door is always open. So if you start going down the DIY path and need some support, always feel free to reach out and we can discuss what support would look like to get you to the finish line on your automation. So our door is always open, whether it's now a year from now or a different tool, our door is always open. And um, yeah, it's just a pleasure being here and sharing everything you can do with the Bloomerang Zapier app. Awesome. Thank you so much. Um, and um, keep your eyes open. We will be having um, Jesse come back and talk with us again for these sessions. And as we always say, thank you so much to all of you for all the work that you're doing in your communities. We greatly appreciate it. Um, and everyone, I hope you have a great day and we'll see you on the next Academy session. Bye-bye.